This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. The second factor and the, the contrast is that there's a relationship with the sheep. Jesus says, I have a relationship with the sheep. The good shepherd knows his sheep, in verses 14 and 15, as opposed to the uh, Pharisees who didn't really know the sheep. Jesus knows you, and he wants you to know him, and he knows everything about you, good and bad, and he loves you anyway. He knows what you are worth. He knows your eternal value. He has remarkable plans for you that defy imagination. He's more excited about your future than you are. You see, we tend to define our future by our present circumstances, or even by our past circumstances. We look at our future and say, our future is dependent on what's happened in the past, and God says, why, why, where do you get that? Why do, why do you define your future based on your past? Well, it makes sense. It's common sense, you know, that you, would, that you would do that. But you see, God says, I see what the future is. I see what eternity is. I see what my plans are for you. I'm not the God of the, of the past. I'm the God of the future. God says, I can take your life right now and do some amazing things. And he does that sort of thing. He does that. And, you know, Jeff, we talked about Jeff earlier. There's a perfect example of a guy who God turned around. I mean, the guy was a soul winner. In the last few years of his life, he was just kind of focused on leading people to Christ. That was his, that was his, that was his calling. He knew. Them. And who would have thought that some guy who lived the way, the life that he had lived, would turn his life around like that? There was a guy when I was in college. Um, you know, I, when I say I'm in college, you guys have to understand that I, you know, I, I was pretty smart. I, I crammed four years of college into 13. <laughs> And uh, so when I talk about being in college, that was a long period of time. Um, so there was this guy that I met when I was in college, and uh, he, uh, he had gotten saved when he was in college. And to watch the transformation in his life, this guy was just an old, well, he wasn't old at the time, but uh, kind of looked old, but he was just a hippie. He was just an old hippie, an old freak. I mean, he had the wild, kinky hair, and he wore the loud clothes, and he, you know, the leather, you know, he wore, I mean, the guy was just a freak, total freak. But that guy got so excited about the Word of God, and he would just read it and study it and read it and study it. And I remember uh, there was, there is, uh, well, R.B. Theme was a, was a Bible teacher. He's passed on now. His son has taken over his ministry now. But he's a, a very um, focused teacher, and there are a lot of his stuff that I, that I look at and I think, yeah, but you know what? He, would, he was really into the Word. Good, good uh, understanding of the Greek and, and uh, Hebrew and a good student and a good teacher. And in fact, he was instrumental in helping Marcia and I decide whether or not we should get married. Um, a couple of books that he wrote that we used. Um, but he got a hold of R.B. Theme stuff. And I mean, the guy just started memorizing it. So he was memorizing the Bible. He was memorizing. I mean, the transformation in his life was remarkable. And somebody said, oh, well, what's this going to do for you? What good is this going to do? So now, you're, so now you're all religious. What good is it going to do? And he said, my choice is not what good it's going to do, but what good is God going to do? And I'll never forget that answer because it was so wise. It was, it was all about not what are you going to do with your life, but what is God going to do with your life? That's the focus. And really, that's the focus that God calls us to today. It's not what am I going to do with my life, it's what is God going to do with my life. What do I do with, with what's happened in my life, and what, but not what do I do with what's happened in my life, but what does God do with what has happened in my life? See, I can live my life and look at all of those circumstances that I've gone through in my life, or the circumstances that I am going through in my life, and I can try, kind of make a design and make a plan and say, okay, this is what I'm going to do, and yada, 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 this is my plan. But what is God going to do with my life? That's the key. So let me take a moment here and, and saying that, and, and I want to teach a lesson here because I'm, and I saved this intentionally. I'd like to introduce to you a couple that has just decided to get married, Andrea and Mike. Wave, wave, hello, wave. No, wave the hand that has the ring. There you go, yeah. Uh, so congratulations, you guys. But here's a lesson I want you to know. What God is saying here is not what are you going to do with your life, but what is he going to do with your life? What are the choices that he makes for you? 
Not what are the choices that you guys make for each other, because it's real easy to start building your life and dreaming, and you know you get all googly-eyed and everything, you know, and you're in love, and you know, uh, <laughs> and then reality sets in, you know, and you wake up one morning and turn over and look at your partner and go, oh, what, what was I thinking? I know that because I've heard Marcia say that several times. <laughs> but the focus here is. Really, not what are you going to do with your life, but what is God going to do with your life? What is God going to do with the circumstances, the pain, the hurt, the suffering, the way that you have been mistreated in your life? Because sometimes we are, we're responsible for our own sin. No question about that. Sometimes we're the victim of sin. Sometimes we're the victim of other people's sin. And boy, would we like to just go smack somebody around because of what they've done to us. But... The key here is, what is God going to do with that? What is God going to do with what's happened? And it it's really comes down to that thing that you hear me talk about all the time. Thinking about the possibilities instead of getting focused on the probabilities. Realizing that the probability is, based on the circumstances and everything, this is what's going to happen, and so I make these decisions, and yada, 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 yada. Why don't you start thinking about what the possibilities might be? Why don't you start thinking about, God, what are the possibilities of what you want to do in, in my life and with my life now? God, what do you want to do? Because God looks at your life and he sees possibilities. He doesn't see probabilities. He sees possibilities. What is God up to in your life? And the good shepherd knows that about you. The good shepherd knows your life and knows the circumstances in your life and knows the situation in your life and says, I know what the possibilities are. He is excited about you and he's exci more excited about your future than you are. Just as the shepherd knows all of the bleats and the baas of his sheep, the good shepherd knows every detail about you. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Class, we want to thank you for watching. We hope it was a blessing.